Faith after fire. I first questioned my black God the day my grandmother's house burned down. Returned to the arms of this foreign soil, she said it was a blessing she survived. Rubbed the ash on her skin like a newborn baptism, said to me, baby boy, everything will be just fine. You see, she's what you call a holy woman. Went to church every Sunday, blessed every meal. She could pray her way out of any situation. Pray and pray. So many prayers you think her breath was a sermon on transparency. But the day my grandmother's house burned down, my faith went with it. It was the day I realized she too could also burn. She too could melt away as an unwilling sacrifice. It was the day I realized her arms can splinter and hunch like old wooden beams reaching for a clutch that looks a lot like hope. Her back is wallpaper, white children carve monologues into her legs like that one rusty doorknob can be forced to open, 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 comply, and never truly sit the same ever again. She can hang. A chandelier too old to produce any light, but just right for decoration, be it a living room or, or, and there's no God I know there's no black power I know that can save her, so I will go to the God that would let it happen. I will sit in a church built atop my people's bones. I will pray to a God who does not love me, who thinks my shade is sinful, who does not know me. I will sit in front of this white pastor who does not know me, who thinks he can cleanse me, whose porcelain Jesus hurts to swallow. His hurly water looks foreign against my brown skin, but I'll take it. I'll take it if it brings at least one blessing, if it puts the fire out. 